All right, so thank you very much for your time, first of all. Uh, let's start with trade. It's a hot topic right now, and markets seem to be have a little bit of relief today, as uh, Steve Mnuchin said, he's hopeful that we, the U.S. comes to deal with China. But as far as Volkswagen's concerned, you sell, I think, more than 600,000 cars a year in the U.S. I know you pr produce a lot as well in Chattanooga, um, but not that many. Um, are you concerned about the threat of tariffs? No, absolutely, and we should. Uh, but at the end of the day, we certainly support and, and, and uh, clearly ask for free trade, uh, that to be an important prerequisite. I think it's also a major part of uh, the success all relevant parties had. And uh, we take it very serious and hope that at the negotiation table, uh, equitable and fair solutions will be found. One of the things um, that's happened since Donald Trump started banging the, the drum about trade is that you've announced a bigger investment in your Chattanooga facility. Do you plan on building more cars in the U.S. in the future? I think for the moment we have quite a bit of capacity left in Chattanooga, but down the road with the electrification of our portfolio, we certainly also will consider very strongly building electric vehicles in the United States, possibly Chattanooga, but so decision, those decisions are still to be made. When it comes to building electric vehicles, um, I always wonder why car makers haven't gotten there faster. Is it the cost of investment that's held car makers back from producing a full portfolio of electric, electric cars? I think there were a couple obstacles we needed to overcome. First of all, cost and price is obviously one of them, charging infrastructure, but also the range was very important for the customers. And I think for those who started too early, they obviously had a hard time finding enough customers. But I think overall the, the environment has changed and we are very positive about the, the opportunities we have. And with all those new models starting in 2020, with the ID family from Volkswagen, but also Skoda, Audi and Seat, I think that would be very attractive product. And uh, we think the time is right now. Tesla has gotten the range issue dealt with to some extent. Um, their biggest problem is production capacity. They can't seem to ramp up quickly enough. Uh, do you expect to be able to play in that price class uh, against a Model S or a Model X? We certainly with Audi and Porsche uh, are thinking more in the luxury arena, but we are thinking about electrification in the volume segments with Volkswagen, Skoda and Seat. And we think we have the right answer and we also think about the pricing level comparable to diesel cars today. How much are you going to invest in this? We heard a massive figure um, last week from BMW. Clearly everybody wants to get you know, a head start and, and control the market. How much do, is Volkswagen willing to spend to do that? I think till the early 20s, we are going to spend 34 billion on electrification, digitalization and autonomous driving. So you can see we are serious about it. We think it's what the customers will increasingly look for but we will also continue to invest in the optimization of our combustion engine portfolio because for the foreseeable future, the combustion engines will make up for the majority of the market, even though a growing number of customers is going to consider electric cars. How long do you think it's going to be until electric cars or electric hybrids overtake uh, sales of straight up combustion engines? I think that's a very difficult one. I think we were re quite courageous with our forecast that by 2025 we could imagine that maybe a fourth of our total sales by then might be electrified, full electric vehicles. And I think that is already one of the most courageous forecasts out there. So it will take a long, long time before that will take place. You mentioned the infrastructure. It's not quite there yet as far as charging stations are concerned, neither in the U.S. or in Germany, although uh, in Germany it's rapidly growing. Um, how does that problem get solved? I mean, do you build your own network of charging stations as Elon Musk has? Do you count on the state to do it, um, you know, for the public good? How does that problem get solved? I think it will be a combination. We are spending $2 billion uh, as part of the settlement in the United States uh, as part of our Electrify America initiative. And we have a joint venture for Europe, uh, Ionity, together with Ford, uh, Mercedes and BMW which we built up uh, around about 400 charging points uh, at highways across Europe. So that's part of it, but we will see certainly municipals uh, to, to help increasing, uh, improving the situation. 
And I think once it's a business case, there will be more investors looking into those uh, facilities. I've heard from a lot of people that there isn't a lot of infrastructure around charging stations. It could be a business case to build restaurants, cafes, even uh, uh, other sort of recreational facilities around them. Can you see Volkswagen getting into that business? I think our focus is uh, certainly the product uh, and the services. But for the time being, we are willing to invest uh, long term. We think uh, that might be a business more for others than for ourselves. And we have a lot of ideas around products and services. What about the price of electricity? I mean, it does cost something to charge up your car. Initially with the Model S and the Model X, um, Tesla gave that away for free. They're now charging with their more inexpensive models. How does Volkswagen see that working out? I think it's quite an attractive proposition for the customer. So I think that will not be the biggest obstacle to overcome. It's more the experience. I think we need to get the people into electrified vehicles to really get the touch and feel. And it's so much fun to drive electric vehicles. So it's important to give people the experience. I think the price per kilowatt hour is not what will uh, make people stay away from it. What about the costs of um investing you you talked about 34 billion that's an audacious number are you able to keep costs down while going after this really a completely new market i think it's critical because we all know that the profitability of electrified vehicles is currently below what we what we achieve with uh, combustion engines but with the improved cost per kilowatt hour for the battery cells plus volume, the proposition will look much better. But the first wave of electrified vehicles will certainly be a challenge, but they will be much better financially uh, than what we've seen in the last couple of years. How do you finance this, this big push? I mean, you've been looking at assets, uh, all of your assets for over a year now. Are you gonna decide at some point to sell or spin off any of the units? I think we are certainly looking into our asset portfolio as we promised. There's unfortunately nothing to be announced today, but it's one of the options. But strengthening our cash flow is our priority. Optimize our investment and in spending. We had quite a bit of opportunity left, so we want to bring down our CapEx and R&D ratios to 6% by 2020. That should provide for the financial funds necessary to make those investments. There was, there obviously were reports, speculation about a sale of Ducati that didn't turn out um, very well. Would you, would you look at other options than a sale? I mean, is it possible to spin off or sell maybe even in an IPO pieces of, of units? No, I mean, we never commented on market speculation. Um, what we always said is, and that for the last two and a half years, years me personally, uh, when people asked about truck and bus, uh, we always said it's most important that we get uh, the collaboration and uh, cooperation between MA and Scania to the next level because they are huge synergies. Andreas Rentschler and his team really make great progress. And we also said that down the road we might be in the position to make a decision regarding an IPO or partial IPO. But other than that, that has been our strategy and the rest has been speculation. When can, when will we, will, will we finally hear news about this asset review? It's been so long. When the time is right, but there's nothing today uh, you can hear from me. All right, let me finally ask you about um, diversity. In the U.S., I know at least more than half of the car purchasing decisions on a retail level are made by women. Uh, is Volkswagen going to push to get more women involved at the higher levels, even maybe on the board level? I think Matthias Müller made a very clear statement that we should think about uh, a more international, more diversified footprint on senior management levels. Uh, I think that's right and uh, I think that's the way to go and that is clearly the direction the company want to take.